Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at how you can make precise interactive animations for your characters and props by utilizing multiple iClone 8 features. The animation that we will use here is a simple wall painting action using a prop paintbrush, and we're mostly going to utilize the Reach Target tool. If you're not familiar with it, you may want to check out the dedicated tutorial first. If you're interested in getting your hands on this motion, you can find it in the Motions for Construction Pack in our content store. Okay, let's get started with our first motion. We're going to use Reach Target, Link, and Look At tools in this scenario. You can see that we have a great motion here, but the paint roller prop is just stationary. Our first step then is to link the prop to our character's right hand. With the prop selected, simply go over to the Attributes tab and select Link, then select the character's hand. You'll see that it will now go along with the movement of the right hand, however it is still drifting away from the left hand. To fix this, I'm going to make sure that the character is selected, and then open up the Reach Target tool, which can be found in the Animation tab of the Modify panel. What I want to do here is select the left hand, and then Create Dummy. I'm going to release it first in order to get the proper scale and position, which in this case is in the middle of the character's hand. Once it's positioned properly, I'll proceed to make sure the paint roller is selected, then choose the Look At feature from our Attributes tab. The prop will flip around a bit, so what you need to do is switch the Look At axis from the drop down menu. In this case, the X axis is the correct one. What will happen now is that whenever the dummy is moved, the handle of the paint roller will move along with it. Now the process is complete. You can see how combining Reach Target, Link, and Look At can help you to quickly and easily create a flawless interactive prop animation. Okay, for our next scenario, we're going to use Reach Target once again, but combine it with Sample Root and Offset as well. Here you can see our animation has our character plastering a wall, however at points his hand is breaking through the wall mesh. You can see that our character is stationary, and his feet are not changing location, so we can sample his root position to the hip in order to refine the positioning a bit. In the timeline, right click on the motion clip, go up to Root Motion, and then select Sample Root to Hip. This will adjust our root position slightly to align better with the hip position of the character in order to improve the overall editing result. Next, let's use the same Reach Target tool to fix the hand going through the wall mesh. Again, you can find the Reach Target tool in the Modify panel, and this time we're going to select the right hand point and choose Select Target and Keep Current Pose. The target in this case is going to be the wall. That will lock our character's right hand to its current position at the current frame. It looks a bit strange when you play back now, as it's constrained to that position on all axes. In order to resolve that, we need to go back to the frame where we enabled the Reach Target and disable the TX and TZ checkboxes which stand for transform on the X and Z axes specifically. Once we do, you can see that our character's hand now has the freedom to move along those axes, but is still constrained on the Y axis, which keeps it parallel to the wall. However, you'll see that there is another issue with the wrist, as it doesn't rotate properly due to this constraint. To fix that, we can again go back to the keyframe where the constraint begins and disable the rotation checkbox. Now because the reach target is the wall in this case, we can actually move the wall itself and our character's hand will react accordingly. Now since there is a part in the animation where we don't want the hand to be constrained to the wall, we need to release it at a certain point in the timeline. What I'll do is go to that frame, enter into the reach target panel once again, and then click on release. You'll see another key appear in our character's main track. You can edit its position from there or also go into the specific reach target track. After the replastering part of the motion is complete, we can then go and repeat the process to again activate the reach target to the wall. Don't forget to deactivate TX, TZ, and rotation constraints as well. Finally, let's look at using reach offset. You'll notice with our reach target positions that there is still some mesh breakage to the wall when our character reaches down to get more plaster. You can manually move the position of the reach target by using the transform gizmo at the point where there is mesh breakage, but you may want to also manually adjust the timing of your constraints. I'll do a couple of quick edits for the hand position here, but there is still some mesh breakage that requires more detailed editing.
What I'll do then is go down into the reach subtracts of my character. You can see that the movements I've made have already been keyed in the reach offset track for the character's right hand, and the length of the constraints are indicated by the horizontal line along the reach R hand track. One way to avoid the mesh breakage aside from manually editing the offset is to change the timing of the reach target constraint. In this case, if I drag the nub on the end of the horizontal line to the left, it will release the constraint earlier. What this will do is then allow our character's hand to move back sooner, therefore preventing the mesh breakage. You can use a combination of both techniques to get the optimal result. That's it for this video guys, thanks so much for watching, and please be sure to check out our other motion editing tutorials for more tips and tricks like this. I'll see you in the next one.